I had a sneaky suspicion you were going to show up. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Wednesday, October 11th. Now, tomorrow being Thursday, I have got a live streaming event. I do this every week on Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Me and my co-host Taylor, we go on live for an hour talking to investors about stocks they're interested in. All week, I share hot penny stocks with you. This gives you a chance to share hot penny stocks with us. But even if you haven't got a hot one, we'll look at whatever stock you want as long as it's under five bucks. I'll go over the information, Taylor will go over the charts, and we'll give you our opinion. That's four o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Now, what I like to do on this show is share hot penny stocks with you. I go out hunting every day across all the markets for any stock under five bucks that has potential to make us money. And when I go searching, I don't go to the news or the filings first. I go directly to the charts. I'm looking for charts that have heat. Maybe there's a breakout setup or a lot of volume coming in. Something that says it's ready to run. When I find a chart that looks primed, then I go through the press releases and the filings looking for that catalyst. When I get the catalyst, I've got myself a hot penny stock. And these are the stocks I share with you every day. First hot penny stock we're going to take a look at is Rite Aid Corporation, ticker RAD. Now, I don't have to tell you who Rite Aid is. If you live in America, you know who Rite Aid is. They're all over the country. Well, this company has been in some financial problems here recently, and there's been talk that they might have to file for bankruptcy. They haven't done it yet, but they see how close they are to the edge, so they are trying to get ahead of this right now and take care of situations. The chart is hot. On September 28th, she was contacted by the New York Stock Exchange that she had fallen under a dollar for too long, 30 days, and that she needed to get it up. Well, on that day, she jumped a big jump, and now she's grabbed momentum and she is getting ready to break out. She's looking really, really strong. So Rad finished the day at 82 cents with just over 9% gains. And as I said, she is on the major exchange, the New York Stock Exchange. So you're gonna be able to trade this for free, no transaction fees with the major exchange stocks, and you're gonna be able to trade it pre-market, after-market as well. You can't do that with OTC. So what was the relative volume around the company today? We got a nice increase here, jumping from 7.3 million up to 11 million. Share structure for RAD, well, they don't give us a lot of information here. Outstanding share count is near 57 million. Don't have any idea what the float is, but it won't be any higher than that. And the market cap, that's almost 43 million. Financials for Rite Aid, whoa, look at that. <laughs> huge, right? For a penny stock, that is huge. Don't forget, we got to add three zeros to any of these numbers. So what we are looking at at the end of March of 2023 is $24 billion. And they got to keep almost $5 billion of that. And as you can see, they're doing well. $21 billion, 24, 24, 24. You wouldn't think they were having any financial problems. Looking at the quarterlies, well, those are strong too. They're doing between five and six billion dollars every three months. God, that's a lot of drugs to sell. And they're taking in a lot of profit. Looking at that balance sheet, cash in the bank. Don't forget, we got three zeros here too. $135 million in the bank. Net receivables, money due them, $1.3 billion. Wow. Inventory of almost two billion. Their total assets, when you add it all together, is $7.6 billion. Total liabilities, a little more than that, $8.5 billion. However, I was reading the news and they tell us that the company is looking at a $3.3 billion deficit right now. But then I read other news that says they've got it down to 1.1. So I'm not real sure how bad it is, but I know they're working on it right now. Jumping over to those disclosures. We have got one 8K here that came out recently, and this is the one I got to share with you, and I've already got it highlighted to make it easy. The company did receive notice from the New York Stock Exchange that they are no longer in compliance. They have two things that they have fallen on. One is the market cap. They have to have a market cap of 50 million. Do you know what their current market cap was? 49.97 million. 
They missed it by 0 0.03. That's all they missed it by, and they're getting hit for it. You didn't hit 50. You've got to hit 50 at least. And the other one is that they've been under a dollar for 30 days. They've got to get the price up over a dollar for 10 consecutive days. Has to close over a dollar. Well, the neat thing here is, is that they tell us that the stock is going to continue to trade while things are happening. The company has a right to appeal, and they're being given that right. Pursuant to the New York Stock Exchange rules, the company has 10 business days from the receipt of the notice to send a letter to the New York Stock Exchange confirming receipt of the notice and to indicate whether it intends to cure these deficiencies. If they don't, they'll be thrown down to the OTC market. Imagine that, an OTC penny stock making billions of dollars. If the company determines to cure such deficiencies, the company would then submit a business plan within the next 45 days of receipt of the notice to demonstrate their compliance. So we've got some time here, and right now the chart is taking off. There is no more news. This is really all the news there is. I mean, there is lots of news for the company, but it really isn't about the stock. It has more to do with what the company's doing, selling Halloween costumes, immunization day, stuff like that. But the chart is looking good, and she started running when that notice came out, September 28th. And now she looks like she's ready to break out and hit that dollar. If she hits the dollar, she'll hit her market cap, she'll be out of hot water, and we could see a nice run. Let's take a gander at Right Aid, and we're going to do all of our gandering on my free trading platform. This is Think or Swim. You get this for free when you sign up with TD Ameritrade. And signing up with them, that's free too. So we are looking at ticker RAD, Right Aid. This is a one-day, one-year chart. We have got a 52-week high back in November of $7.37. And then at the end of September, we had a 52-week low of $0.38. Cents. And as you can clearly see, she has been well under the 200, declining all of this year. She did tap the 200 twice, but never even broke it. Coming down to our six-month, four-hour view. Well, she finally broke the 200, hitting a high here on our six-month chart of $4.18. Came down and had a nice rip here, going from $1.61 up to $3.22. That was a 100% run there, and I'm not real sure what caused that. But she fell really hard after that, all the way down here to 60 cents. And from there, she wasn't done. She kept pushing down to this 52-week low of 38 cents. Now, it was two days later that she got contacted by the New York Stock Exchange that she was not in compliance. What well, does that look like? Bad news to you? She jumped 50%, going from about $0.38 cents up to $0.78, cents, and then back down higher than where she started. Lots of volume on that day for sure. She went sideways very slowly, creeping across the board until she got close to the 50, jumped up on top of that, creeped for a few more days, bounced off her 20, and beelined it straight to the 200. And she has cracked it, and she's pulled back, and she's sitting on top of her 9-day SMA right now, looking primed and ready to run. Our volume, it is low. We would love to see some volume come in. All of our SMAs are turning up right now and looking good. Speaking of turning up, our oscillators are looking great. Our PPO, percentage price oscillator, she's been climbing for three days just like our MACD pushing up, and our RSI was in the overbought all the way up there to 80, she has pulled back and she is just at about 69 right now. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. So she was trying to get over the 200 here. Didn't make it. Fell hard down to that low bubble. There's that bounce. She jumped through the 200, came down higher than where she started. So now we're going to be looking for a breakout. So I'm going to be looking for the crouch, falling down, and then pushing back up for the pounce. She pushed herself up on top of the 50-day SMA, rolled that across the 200. Once she got up over the 200, she jumped, missing the 20, going straight to the 9-day SMA. But here's a little respect for you. Tap that 20 and then take off again. And she was running for three days here from 52 cents up to 95 cents. We are just shy of 100% run. She has pulled back. And again, she is sitting on her nine-day SMA perfectly right now. 
all of our SMAs look outstanding. Our oscillators, they were very hot, but let's pull back the back half of the day, have cooled all of our oscillators off a bit. And our five day, five minute. That's not a bad chart. We got a low bubble in this corner of 48 cents, steady climb through every single day, hitting that high of 95 cents, falling back to the 200, really didn't even touch it, and has bounced off of that. Right now, she is arguing after market period. I see we just had another red bar come into the picture. I can't tell what she's doing right now. All of our oscillators are pretty planted. They're all kind of going straight, just like our price. But, the four hour chart says she's ready to rip. The one hour chart says she is ripping and she's getting close to a dollar. And I think if she gets close, she is gonna break it and take off. I myself am gonna put RAD on my watch list. How about you? Got another hot penny stock for you from the major exchange. This is VoxelJet, ticker VJET. Her chart is looking really good. It is an atypical breakout chart that is in the midst of breaking out right now. Matter of fact, her chart looks a lot like the chart we just looked at, except stronger technicals. VJet just had news come out, big news. They are involved in a huge deal with the Department of Energy. So VJet finished the day at $1.38 with over 32.5% gains, and she is on the NASDAQ. So what is VoxelJet all about? Well, they are into 3D printing. They make the 3D printers, they do 3D printing, they even make special casts for 3D printing. Voxel Jets roots reach back to the year 1995 with the first successful dosing of UV resins. That's the goop that they print with. In the context of Hidden Project, initial 3D printing tests are performed at the Technical University Munich. Our company was founded on May 5, 1999 as a spinoff from TUM in Munich with a clear vision in mind to establish a new manufacturing standard by developing new generative processes for the series production of complex components using 3D printing. We are a globally acting, leading provider of high speed, large format 3D printers and on demand 3D printed parts to industrial and commercial customers. Components manufactured with the help of our technology are flying in space, make mobility more efficient and the production of new engineering solutions possible. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Nice, it's a nice increase. There's still small numbers, but consider, we just jumped from 20,000 up to 843,000. That is five times 840. That is 42 times her normal volume. So even though the numbers are small, that is a huge increase you can't ignore. Share structure for VJet. Ah, ha, ha, we got a low float. They don't tell us what it is. All we know is the outstanding share count is at 9.1 million float isn't going to be any higher than that and could be considerably less. And even if it isn't considerably less, anything under 10 million is a low float. So that looks good. And they don't tell us the market cap here. So I have no clue. Checking out the financials for VJet. Let's see what we got going here. She's been doing about 27 to 29 million on an average, and she's taking profits regularly. Looking at the quarterly, Oh, we got nothing here quarterly. So let's jump on into that balance sheet. See what we can learn there. Cash in the bank. They've got almost $13 million. They're owed about $6 million. They've got an inventory of almost $12 million. Total assets altogether, $58 million. Total liabilities, only $32 million. So they're not looking bad. Their financials aren't in bad shape and their revenues are strong. Taking a look at the disclosures for VJet, we've got one current filing here. It is a 6K that came out on the 25th of September, and this actually correlates to news. So let's jump on over to that news. So we don't have a lot of news over here. We've got one that came out on the 25th, German 3D printing firm Voxeljet to review strategic alternatives. And that's what the filing was. They're looking for ways to increase shareholder value whether that be a merger, a joint venture, an acquisition. They're not sure what it is they're going to do, but they're open-minded to it. Then we've got a piece of news that came out today. Voxeljet selected for $14.9 million contract 
along GE research to develop advanced manufacturing technologies to enable the U.S. energy transition. They tell us here that the company is going to receive funding from the U.S. Department of Energy for the development of novel manufacturing processes. The Department of Energy grant will fund the development and commercialization of VoxelJet Sandbinder Jet 3D printer used to manufacture massive sand casting molds. The new manufacturing technology will produce metallic near shape components for the wind and hydro energy sectors, reducing production time and costs. VoxelJet will develop and build a 3D sand printer with breakthrough size for the addictive manufacturing of sand molds for casting parts ranging from 10 tons to over 60 tons. GE Research has selected VoxelJet as its partner for the U.S. Department of Energy's $14.9 million award in federal funding for the development and commercialization of a large Sandbinder Jet 3D printer called Advanced Casting Cell, ACC to accelerate the United States' transition to clean power. The project aims to produce 3D printed large-scale sand molds to cast components for offshore turbines. This novel manufacturing technology has the potential to reduce overall hydropower costs by 20% and lead times by four months. So they're creating these sand casts that they're gonna pour molten metal into and create these humongous pieces. It's going to save them money. It's going to save them time. And it's being funded by the Department of Energy, who you know has deep pockets. And the chart is hot. Let me show you what I'm talking about. We're going to take a look at VoxelJet now, ticker VJET. We're looking at a one-day, one-year chart to get that 52-week high and low. Back in October of last year, we hit the high of $3.49. We had a long drawn out fall the entire year, never even getting close to that 200. And we hit a 52 week low in October of this year of a dollar two. Jumping on down to that six month, four hour view, we've got a high on our six month chart of $2.83. And even though she's been falling all this time, she's been banging on that 200 a lot. Until here in August, she fell away. And I'm not real sure what caused it. She fell from about a buck 55 down to a dollar 11. But she wasn't done. She continued dribbling downhill until she hit that 52 week low of a dollar two. And that didn't change anything. She jumped up off of that, but she just went sideways for a full week. And I don't think anything was going to change it. She might have started the dip, except that news came out. And boom, she exploded. Volume came into the picture. The price starts running. She jumped here from $1.05 all the way up to $1.52, breaking that 200, coming back down to $1.15 and climbing the rest of the day, finishing the day off at $1.38. And she's still pushing up after market. All of our SMAs are turning up and looking good. Osculators are all pushing up at a strong bounce on our PPO. Our MACD, lots of green bars on our MACD, <laughs> and look at our RSI. That has gone from 43 all the way up to 71. That is hot, folks. Taking a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. So nothing really going on until she hit this low bubble, and well, then there was nothing going on after it either for about six days. And then, of course, the news changed everything. You can see it was first thing in the morning. We had the big rip. She came back down, landing on the nine, and then climbing all day. And look at our SMAs here. Every single one is about ready to cross that 200. We just had the 20 cross. Here comes the 50 in the 200 haul. Those are going to be golden crosses. That creates an updraft extra push on the price. Osculators are looking great. Our PPO and our MACD are still climbing and our RSI is still up there in the overbought. Barely. She is at 69.7. Looks like we're getting some aftermarket activity right now. I'm seeing things change as I'm looking at them. So, as I said, nothing going on. She is floating on top of that 200-day haul. We've been talking a lot about that. This morning, she took off with a big rip pre-market came down to the nine day SMA on our five minute chart, ran up until about 20 to 10, jumped. There was your high right there, 20 to 10, 
came back down to the nine day, climbed up to 10 after 10, and then fell away. Now, me personally, if I'm in a stock that's running hard first thing in the morning, I will normally get out at 10, 10.05, not worrying about what I'm leaving on the table. At 10, 10.05, there's a pause in the market and they're flipping a coin. Are we going to continue going up or are we going to change direction and start going down? And rather than wait for that decision, I just get out. I'm happy to take my gains each day before 10, regardless what happens after 10. That's my first play of the day. Once that's done, now I got the rest of the day for another play. And it was after 10, she fell away. She fell through that 20, but she didn't want to stay under. This is what I like to call a rubber ball bounce. She falls under the water and comes back up real quick. Look at that big bar. Jumped right back up on top of the 20, got on her nine, started floating on that, started going across and it looked like she was going to dip right there, but it was a bounce. She has pushed herself up. She's back up on top of the nine and it looks like she's trying to climb after market hours. Our 200 day SMA is now on an uptrend. Oscillators, ooh, not so great right now. They're kind of going sideways and down just a little bit, but I like the news. I like the volume. I like the charts. I think she's worth putting on your watch list. It can't hurt just to put VJET digitally over there on your charts. Watch it, folks. Please, it might make just you some don't. money. Man, these hot penny stocks from the major exchange just keep coming. This is ShareCare, ticker SHCR. Her chart, it's just like the last two. You'd think we were looking at the same chart. It is an atypical breakout chart that is in the midst of breaking out right now and looks powerful. And the company just came out with a filing October 8th. It is big news. You're not going to want to miss this one. So SHCR finished the day at $1.19 with over 27% gains. She too is on the NASDAQ. So what is ShareCare all about? Well, they tell us that ShareCare is the leading digital health company that helps people no matter where they are in their health journey, unify and manage all their health in one place. Our comprehensive and data-driven virtual health platform is designed to help people, providers, employers, health plans, government organizations, and communities optimize individual and population-wide well-being by driving positive behavior change. Driven by our philosophy that we are all together better, at ShareCare, we are committed to supporting each individual through the lens of their personal health and making high-quality care more accessible and affordable for everyone. Not very specific, is it? So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, she did more than double her normal volume, jumping from $2 million to over $4 million. Share structure for ShareCare... Well, they only tell us the outstanding share count. It's kind of high, 357 million. Don't know what the float is. It could be anywhere up to 357 million, or it could be considerably less. Market cap for share care, 334 million. Taking a look at the financials for share care. Dun, da, da, da. Anytime you want to come up, there you go. Ooh, they are making good money, whatever it is they're doing. They've been increasing steadily here. 339, jumping to 412, jumping to $442 million, getting to keep over $200 million for profit. Quarterly, we got here. Well, they're still doing good. Every single quarter, they're doing over $110 million, and they're taking home a lot of profit. Looking at their balance sheet, cash in the bank, $144 million. Total assets, well over a half a billion. $655 million and total liabilities is only $126 million. <laughs> I feel funny saying only with the number like $126 million. All right, let's take a look at those disclosures. This is the news here. Now, all these Form 4s, they are eye-catching because we know that Form 4s are filed whenever the insiders acquire or dispose of shares and we're always looking for them to be buying them. Well, all of these are with restricted shares, so they have nothing to do with us. But this piece of news right here, this is the catalyst, the SC13DE. These are filed whenever somebody buys enough shares that they qualify to be a partner. 
They get a percentage of the company. Well, we've had one guy with all of his numerous different entity companies buy up a lot of shares. Now, I'm not going to go through all of this real slow, but I want to give you an idea of what's going on. You can have as many as they can fit onto these farms. Sometimes there's one, sometimes there's two, sometimes there's 20. This has got 33, 33 purchases. They list up here, whoever is buying, this is Claritus Capital Fund 4. They are buying 791,000 shares and that's going to give them, oh boy, 0.2% of the company. Not very much. Now notice here, here's Claritus Desertus Partners. This one is Claritus Irby. Each one of these are a different company by the same guy, Claritus Opportunity. And they're all buying some. And I'm just going to scroll through here because there's 33 of them. I'm trying to get to the bottom. All of these are purchases by one guy. And this is what they sum it up for. The aggregate number of shares of common stock beneficially owned by the person is 37 million shares, which represents approximately 10.4% of the company's stock. Well, we know they've got 357 million, so that's right. Down here, they tell us on October 3rd, Mr. Chadwick, that is the gentleman that owns all those companies, a member of the board of directors submitted a preliminary non-binding proposal to the board on behalf of Claritas Capital to buy all of the rest of the shares for a price anywhere between $1.35 and $1.80. The proposal may result in one or more of the transactions, events, or actions being specified in clauses through item four of schedule 13D. That's where we're at. They warned us there could be a lot of them. They were right. There was a lot of them. So this guy, Mr. Chadwick, has plans that has not been approved yet to buy all of the shares of the company stock for anywhere from $1.35 to $1.80. We don't have any more information. We don't know when, we don't know the exact price, but every time I find pieces of news like this, as soon as I post the news and go look at the chart, it's too late. They've already run, it's a done deal. Why even look at it anymore? We're not there yet with this one. So we've got an opportunity to make some money. Let's go take a look at this chart. You gotta admit, that looks a lot like the charts we just looked at. This is share care though. Ticker SHCR, and we're going to start off with the six month, four hour chart with this one because a 52 week high really isn't relevant in this situation. So we've got a high on our six month chart of $2.71 back in February. Lots of dips and falls here to our 52 week low of 77 cents. Off of that low, she did bounce. She put herself up underneath this 50 day SMA, falling back to the 20 and carrying that up over the 50. Then she just kind of meandered around here for two weeks doing nothing until that filing came out on the 8th. And she jumped from 88 cents up to $1.20 in three days. That is over 30% run right there. And she's broke through the 200 and she is still over the 200 right now. All of our SMAs are pointing up and our 200 is just now going flat. Volume was good today. Days before it was pretty weak. So I'm going to hope we get some more volume tomorrow. The oscillators are definitely looking better. They were doing nothing for many a days. Look at all the enthusiasm that came into the picture today. Both the PPO and the MACD are climbing hard and furious. Lots of green bars on our MACD. And our RSI has jumped hard from 41 all the way up to 78. And she is on fire right now. 20 day, one hour view. So she's predominantly been on top of the 200 here. She dipped, she fell, and she may have kept falling had that filing not come out. Off of this low bubble, you can see she has been ripping it for three days and she is still pushing after market. And look at these SMAs. Don't those look beautiful? The only thing here that worries me is how far away this nine day SMA is from that 20 day SMA. They're like rubber bands. They get too far apart, they come back real fast. So we're gonna keep our eye on that. Oscillators, PPO is still real strong, but showing a sign of curving over right now, just like our MACD. That shows signs of coming back down. RSI is still hot. It is way up there at 77, but it too is coming down right now. 
checking out our five day, five minute view. Nothing to talk about except that bounce off of that low bubble. She has put herself on top of everything, was climbing fast and furious with a lot of activity. She has now gone to the 50 day SMA and bounced off of that and she is starting to climb again, actually hitting a new high here after market hours. I like seeing that. And look at that 200 folks. Is there any doubt she's in an uptrend now? Our oscillators, they were cooling down right here. All that was cooling everything off. She is in a bounce right now. Oh, did we just have a drop? That just happened right now. Sure did. So she is wrestling right now to stay over that. <laughs> she dropped again. To stay over that 50. Oscillators are wrestling right now, but our RSI is falling down here. I still like this, folks. Whenever I find stocks that are being bought out for cash, I never get a chance to play them. They're already done by the time I see them. And it could just have been two minutes ago the news came out. Boom! The stock jumps that fast. I don't know why this one hasn't jumped, except maybe it hasn't been approved yet. Maybe once the letter comes out, it's been approved, it's going to be gone. So getting in early might be quite important on this one. Now, my opinion may be biased, but I think we've got ourselves a hot lot of stocks today. Rite Aid, she may be on the edge of trouble, but she's not in trouble yet. She's making billions of dollars. She's in profits and the chart is hot right now. We're not talking about hanging around for a long time. This isn't an investment. It is a play, a day trade or a short swing. And I think the charts for rad are hot. Then of course we got VJet. She's looking good too. She needs to get over a dollar to be safe. She needs to get over 50 million on her market cap and she's close. But if she doesn't succeed, one of her solutions is a reverse split. Keep that in mind. And the last stock, Share Care, that's kind of exciting. It hasn't exploded yet. And I'm thinking because it hasn't been approved. Once it's approved, if you're not in, forget it. It's going to be done. Right now, we're at a buck 19, and that price is way up high over the 20. Maybe it will come down to that 20. That would be a good entry. Now, of course, I have not covered all the information on any of these stocks, so I'm expecting you to do some more DD. It's your money. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.